What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Iron Ship or Ship for short, and today we're going to be discussing my PvP Staff Dagger build. And this build is insanely fun, unreal bursty, and it does have some escape too, which is really good, especially in small scale where people are seeing you and they want to dive at you. Get over here, Pookie. Yeah, you better run. Freeze! <laughs> I'm invisible, baby. Where'd I go? Where did he go? Peekaboo! <laughs> All right, so let's talk skills and how this will work in terms of what you want to use each skill for. So first things first, this buff is absolutely disgusting, and I highly suggest not even really using too many defensive abilities when you have this buff up. This makes it so you guarantee that you land hits on enemies because it increases your hit chance, and it also increases your evasion chance across magic, melee, and ranged abilities also going to give us a damage boost so you want to use this ability off cooldown especially when you want to engage chain lightning is your bread and butter you're pressing this thing off cooldown every 5.6 seconds it just does good damage and it spreads to the entire enemy team in 3v3 pvp that's awesome for our defensive ability we have block blade which is going to be the dagger's defensive ability if you dodge perfectly you do go invisible which is a guaranteed crit on your next spell or ability this can be really good with something like fireball to just do a guaranteed fat damage number if you see somebody that might run at you or they're trying to escape from you, here comes one of the best PvP moves in the game, in my opinion, and that's Icebound Tomb. This is going to lock them in place so they cannot move. So you can essentially rain on them or send your tank or whoever at them to just burst them down uncontrollably. Ice Spear Bombardment is a little longer of a cooldown, but it does a ton of damage and it's an absolute rain of Ice Spears at a very quick cast time. Speaking of quick cast times, we have Judgment Lightning. This is instant cast, and if the enemy is burning, there's a chance that you can use this ability twice. If it does come out that way and you are able to use it twice, that's insane. Because in PvP, burn damage and stacking a ton of burn isn't really something you're thinking about because honestly, there's just way too much movement and way too much escape. Speaking of evasion, this is where this kit gets a ton of fun. We have Camouflage Cloak. This puts us invisible, and where I have it right now, it's almost for 10 seconds of invisibility. But the cool thing is you can use it for escape, but you can also use it for a initiation because when you come out of invisibility, as we said, a guaranteed crit using something like Fireball, even Judgment Lightning, or anything along those lines, even Ice Spear Bombardment, you're gonna do so much damage. But not only do we have Invis, we also have Frost Smoke Screen. We are going to dash away in any direction that we're holding a button, and it's going to leave a slowing ice field behind us, which is great for area denial, and playing around that ice field in your dash is a super good way to play this class. We've talked about it a bit so far, but Focus Fire is going to be our bread and butter nuking ability. This thing you can charge as much as you want and release it whenever you want, but it is going to do a ton of damage. And if you come out of invisibility with it, it is a guaranteed crit. I've seen this thing drop near half HP bars, especially on backline. But when you get them weak, that is when we pull out the daggers and make some serious plays. Our final movement ability is Shadow Strike. This is going to put us directly behind an enemy. And we are going to increase its range. We'll talk about the skill specializations in a second. So when somebody is weak, after you have nuked them with a ton of your magic abilities, especially the back line, you want to use this ability to dive behind them. And when you're behind them, you follow up with the kit in this order. You're going to use Ankle Strike because when you've used Shadow Strike, you chain them, you bind them. And when an enemy is bound, there's a chance that they get knocked down with Ankle Strike. Knocking them down immediately after dashing on them is detrimental and terrifying. Then you're going to use two Cleaving Moonlights and then end it with Thunderclouds. That combination should be enough damage to at least sweep a few backline. And if it's a healer, if it's another damage dealer or somebody along those lines, being able to sweep them off the battlefield before they get healed up is so good. So you need to make sure you're sweeping with this combination whenever you get the chance. So let's showcase a little bit of how our rotation would look. Like I said, initially, we want to keep using Chain Lightning just to apply some damage. But if they do get frosted, that lightning will start spreading. So you can see here, we'll frost them up. And then you will see some spread of the lightning there. If the enemy's getting a little too aggressive or if he starts getting weak, we can bind them in place and start applying some more damage from afar. Even while they're binded, we could go ahead and throw a focus fire at them. If you see a weak enemy, here comes the combination. You're going to hit him with the dive, immediately knock them down, double up and finish him off. So like I said, we're going to dive in here with Shadow. We're going to go over with Ankle Strike, hit him with two Cleaving Moonlight, and finish up with a Thundercloud. You can see how fast that combination was. A ton of damage, super fast. And if I was in danger of coming out, I could show you quickly when we wait off cooldowns. I could do something like this. Dive in, hit him with the Gambit. 
and then dash out and that will leave a slowing damage over time field right there at their feet now we talk about our escapability granted we could also talk about the buff here not going to really get a lot of value of showing out of this but here go ahead victorious energy this is the buff that's going to be on us at all times every time we get that opportunity to engage in a fight we should be using that even if we're feeling in danger because it does add a ton of evasion uh for us as well our biggest escape and initiation of all is going to be this invisibility leading right after with a fireball as a guaranteed crit just ensuring you do a ton of damage Let's quickly talk about our passives. Our passives are going to be pretty self-explanatory, but it's still good to talk about and explain why we're doing it. First, we're gonna have Shadow Walker. This makes it so we increase our ranged and melee evasion when we use a movement skill, and we have a ton of them on this kit. That's just a bread and butter must have alongside the crit buff. So we do want the crit damage and critical hit chances, which are gonna come from Instincts and from Wrathful Edge. I would highly suggest leveling up those two and even Shadow Walker if you're focusing on PVP first before anything else. Step is going to increase our mana every time we get a takedown. Echo Echoic Barrier is going to reduce those weird, annoying things like Sleep, Bind, and Silence. We're going to increase our mana and health with Mana Amp. And then Forbidden Sanctuary is another really strong one. It's going to increase our skill damage as a whole. But it's also going to increase our mana usage, but in 3 v in small scale, even in open world, when you're not getting run down by 70 enemies, not a big deal. And then Ascensionism, which is going to battle that a little bit by giving us more mana regen and also going to increase our damage when stationary. For specializations, you can look at them here, but I'll give you a quick rundown. For Focus Fire, we're really going to just run the gambit on the choices of skill specializations because it's just a bread and butter nuke for us. Chain Lightning, we're going to leave as is. Really don't need to add too much to it. Ice Spear is going to get the Bombardment. It's going to get Bind and it's going to get a 40% damage increase. For Tomb, we're going to make it so it binds as well. We're also going to use Icy Mark because it's going to reduce the chances of them evading our attacks. And if they're getting weak, we can then dive on them after they have this debuff. Victorious Energy we talked about, that's our buff. We're going to increase the damage with it and also change the way the buff is. So this initially, guys, is going to be, as you can see here, high focus. But when we add Victorious Energy, it changes that buff. And then Judgmental Lightning, we're not going to touch either. It just does its job already. For stats, this is going to get a bit contradictory to our PvE. As you can see in PvE, I typically focus Dex and Wisdom, but in PvP, I really want to be focusing things like Strength and Perception. I don't want to miss, so Perception is super important, and Strength just for the health, because honestly, there's a lot of dive and there's a lot of damage in the game. You do want to survive, so health is not something to scoff at. So I typically look into messing with Health and Perception a ton, and then start peppering in some Wisdom and Dexterity on top of that. It's really going to be dependent on your gear that you have, and what feels comfortable with your specific build. For Weps, I do want to get Laquariuses. These are really good. This just increases your damage on mobility abilities. And we do want to get Talus' staff, which I don't have yet, which is a big bummer. But that is the staff that every time you get CC'd, you get it in an ice barrier. And I don't need to explain that more. Having invulnerability when you get CC'd is disgusting. For the stats on equipment, you want to be looking for, it, which is going to depend here, and I mean to say this so you can hear me. If you want to, you in this game, it's really rock, paper, scissors. You, do you want to avoid magic? Do you want to avoid range? Or do you want to avoid melee? I would typically pick two out of those three because if you try to spec in all three, you can't be a master if you're a jack of all trades. So you really got to pick two and fine tune how you want to play. For me, per, uh, for me, I'm going to be looking for ranged and melee and then be weak to other mages just because I know that play style more. But if mages are a problem for you, maybe you want to be strong to mages and range damage and then really focus on your mobility against the people coming up close. So I would spec more towards melee evade, or so I would spec more towards magic and ranged evade rather than melee evade in that situation. It's really gonna depend what you're looking for. There's no right or wrong answer. It's all rock, paper, scissors, which is the nice thing. It may sound difficult, but that rock, paper, scissors mechanic alongside perfect pairing and timings and cooldowns and dodges and all that stuff just adds to the real true nuances of PVP. If you guys like this content, hitting that follow button, subscribing, coming over to the channel and dropping a follow for me, all that stuff would mean the absolute world to me. Comments, I appreciate you guys like crazy. I've got more of this stuff coming in the future. Keep it locked and I'll see you in the next one. Get fucked. One. Give me two, give me three. Come on! Thunder! Freeze! Stay right there, big dog. Give me four. I want five. 
alive! Get him out of here! <laughs> 